welcome back. In this and in the next video, I want to talk about something different. We attacked different machines from Windows machines to Linux machines, but in these two videos, I want to show you that you can also target your own router or the router from the network that you are attacking. Now, it might seem that it is not that important to test your router, but once you gain access to the router, you pretty much have the control over the entire network. And not only that gaining access to the router is powerful in means that you can change different network settings, that you can forward different ports and so on and so on, the routers are also the easiest devices to hack. You might be asking, why? Well, because usually 90% of home routers and home devices have default login passwords. The vendors who provide homes with their routers never really change the default password and default password is something that you can find on the internet. These default password attacks we're going to check out in the next tutorial, but for this one I want to show you a cool tool that you can use to test on your own router to check out whether it is vulnerable to some exploits. So just type in your search bar router exploit and it will lead you to this github link where we will have our router exploit tool. Now we already know how to download all of these github tools so let's copy the link straight away, navigate to our desktop and we can git clone router exploit. While this is coping let's go down to the installation commands just to see how we can install this tool properly and here we have installation of Cal Linux and all of the commands that we must run. So we must install python3.pip even though I believe we already have this let's run the command just to make sure and it requires root privileges so let's enter the root account first and let's type the same command apt-get install python3.pip everything is installed let's move on to the next command we already did the git clone let's change the directory to router exploit and the next command is python3 and then install the requirements as we can see inside of the router exploit directory we have requirements.txt file and whenever you have this requirements.txt we already know that we must run this command to install all of the requirements from that file. Let's press enter. As soon as it installs all of these files that it needs, we should be ready to run the router exploit tool, which is this rsf.py. Okay, so everything has finished and let's python3 rsf.py. And you will notice that once you run this tool, it will open something that looks similar to the msf console. We get this command line type and here we can execute different commands. It says right here that it has 132 exploits, 4 scanners, 171 credential attacks, 4 generic attacks, 32 payloads and 6 encoders. Now to check out all of the available commands we can run help command and it will tell us how to use a certain module, how to execute a shell command argument and here we can also search for different tools. Now if I type search scanners, it will give us all of the four scanners that it has. And in this video, we're going to use this auto PWN scanner. This will test for all the exploits from the router exploit tool onto our target router to see whether it is vulnerable to any one of them. So let's type use scanners and then auto PWN. Once you select it, you can type help or pardon me, you can type show options the same way that we do inside of the MSF console. And the only thing that we must set is target IP address. To do that, we can type set target 192.168.1.1. This is the router in my case. If you want to check out your gateway or your router, you can type the command netstat-nr and under the gateway, you will have the IP address of your gateway. Once you check it out, Type it right here, and as soon as you set your IP address, you can type run. As it says, it will start the vulnerability check, and it will go through all of these exploits and see whether your router is vulnerable to any one of them. 
If you have this minus sign, that means that the router is not vulnerable. If you have this star sign, that means the router exploit cannot really determine whether your router is vulnerable to this security threat. As it says right here, it could not be verified. And if you have a plus sign, which we don't have at the moment, that means it found a security vulnerability for your router. In my case, I believe I don't have any at the moment, but you might find some vulnerability for the router. Let's wait for this scan to finish. And it is done. It says could not confirm any vulnerability and it couldn't find default credentials. And this part right here is not exactly true. We're going to check out default credentials in the next video. However, you can test these exploits with the router exploit tool. You can also check out these ones that says could not verify exploitability. This could possibly mean that they are vulnerable to these attacks, or this exploit is simply just not the type of exploit that targets your router. Okay, now that we covered the router exploit tool, we're going to see how we can gain access to the router with the default credentials vulnerability that at least 70 to 80% of home routers have. See you in the next video. Welcome back. Time to check out the default credentials vulnerability on your router. Now, this tutorial is something that you cannot follow because this is going to be different for every type of router that someone has. I can just show you the process of how I went and discovered the default credentials and you can try to do the same thing in order to see whether you can gain access to your router. So the first thing that I did is I typed netstat-nr to check out the IP address of my gateway, which is most likely going to be the IP address of your router. Then I went to Google Chrome and visited that IP address. If you do the same for your router, it will most likely lead you to some type of a login page where it will ask you for the username and the password. Once you type the username and the password, you will have access to the router settings and you will be able to change a few things here and there, from setting up wireless to port forwarding and similar settings like that. Now, if you haven't changed the default password for your router, you will most likely be able to find it on the internet. Which I did, I just searched the name of the router that I have right here and I found the username to be telecom and password to be telecom. Nobody changed this username and password, therefore they're exactly the same. And we even get this warning that says a data breach on a site or app exposed your passwords. Chrome recommends changing your password for this IP address now. We're going to click on OK and pretty much we already gained access to the router settings. We can set up the firewall, VLAN settings, we can check out different settings that we have right here. We have some security settings right here. We also get the port forwarding, which we can perform. And this is something that I tested on multiple home routers and many of them appear to have default credentials where it allows you to log into the router and change these type of settings. But these are not the only default credentials that you can find. For example, if I go right here and I run an nmap scan with dash st command on my router IP address, I will also discover that it has some ports open. For example, it has this telnet port open. We already know how we can connect to the telnet. We can type the command telnet and then the IP address of the target that we want to connect to. If I press enter, we will get another login screen. So if I type something like telecom once again, it will tell me that the password is incorrect. Hmm. So after three attempts, it simply just closes the connection to the router. And I figured, well, if the router default credentials weren't changed, then probably I can find the telnet credentials as well on the internet. And after a few minutes of Googling, I ran across this website where I scrolled a little bit down and I found this post that was posted by someone. It says my router name which is this one, and we can compare it right here. It is the same name. And we get the username and password. We also get how we can enable the shell inside of that router. So let's give it a try. The username is admin and the password is this. Let's go and run telnet once again. 
type username to be admin and password to be ZTONPK. And here it is, we're inside of CLI. Now, the next thing that this person does is it types enable. Then it enters the password of ZTE and then it enables shell. Let's give it a try. If I type enable, type ZTE and then shell, hmm, another login attempt. But luckily, this person also provided us with username and password for that. This is something that we will most likely never be able to brute force in case we didn't know because this is a really strong username and strong password. However, it is default one and this is something that we can find on the internet. For your router, of course, this will not be the same, but you can go through the same process of searching for the default credentials. Just figure out the name of your router, type it in in Google and try to find some default credentials. For example, we notice that I have open port SSH and Telnet. You might be able to target SSH and not Telnet, or you might be able to target some different port. It could all depend on your router. However, now I'm targeting Telnet and let's go and type in the username and password that this person sent us. So I have it written on my left screen and I will type FNNSD3ZX h and h168 and v31 for some reason it says bad username let's try once again maybe we typed something incorrectly so let's go admin password let's enable the password is ete and let's go into shell here we want to type fn n as the 3 z x h and h168 nv31 which is the login and the password is z x h and h168 nv31 and here we are we are inside of the shell if i type ls we're going to be able to see the files on our router i can type the ifconfig command to be able to see all of the interfaces that our router has here the first interface has the IP address of 192.168.1.1 and down here we're also going to be able to find the public IP address which is right here. Okay, great. We have gained access to the router. We can also go and change directories to different directories if we want to. We can run different commands that you can usually run from your terminal and that's how you can gain access to your router with default credentials. Now give it a try on your own router, try searching the name of the router, first try logging into this page right here, which will grant you an access to some of the router settings. And even if you don't manage to do that, try scanning your router with Nmap, figure out whether it has some interesting ports open and then target those ports with default credentials that you might manage to find online, just like I did right here. Okay, now that we covered this, we're ready to continue with our exploitation section. See you in the next video.